Now in general, feminism, and thereby feminists, are seen as a good thing. It's believed that feminism was created by women to free themselves from male oppression. They say they want genuine equality with men, under the law, at home, and at work. However, my research has led me to a very different view of the origins of feminism. The true purpose of feminism is hidden in plain view and has nothing to do with men or women. Instead, it concerns hatred, money and power. I aim to show you that feminism has not liberated women from oppression. One cannot liberate a group that's already free. Instead, rather than liberate women, feminism has actually created their real oppression. Women's choices have not increased with feminism, they've reduced. Before feminism, women could choose whether to work or not. Now they increasingly have no choice. They have to work. Feminism hurts women deeply. Indeed, it was created to do so. By encouraging all women into the workforce, feminism has disrupted family life with a resulting negative effect on children and relationships. Life has become more expensive due to feminism, with higher taxes and house prices. The pace and pressure of work has increased, and life has become more difficult for everyone. Women have gained little, if anything, from feminism, but they've lost a great deal. But, and I say this with as much respect as possible, women have been too stupid to see it. Women don't get the plot even at this late stage in the game. They don't see what's been done to them in the name of women's liberation. Feminism is understood by most people to be about equality between men and women. It denotes the ongoing struggle of women to be treated the same as men and to have all the opportunities and rights that men have. But feminism is not about equality and never has been. In fact, feminism by definition cannot be about equality between men and women because, as we'll see in the equality films, it's impossible to equate entities that are so different. Feminism actually has three main objectives, none of which are positive for women. The deconstruction of family, putting women to work, stripping men of their civil rights. Feminism at its heart is an enormous, orchestrated and sustained attack on men and women, perpetrated by business and government, using the psychology of women to achieve its ends. The methodology used to deliver this attack is almost entirely based on destroying men and the very idea of manhood. By attacking men, the natural cohesion of family is disrupted, the protection of men over women and children is removed, and women are thereby left exposed to various forms of exploitation by agencies that have no interest in their welfare or the welfare of their children. Feminism is something of a masterpiece of social engineering. It's clever, it's insidious, it's popular, and it's been going on since the Second World War, with no real signs of slowing down. But I'm getting ahead of myself. According to feminists, throughout history, women have sure had it rough. They've had to endure the same hardships as men across the ages, with the additional burdens of childbirth, raising families, and enduring brutal treatment at the hands of men. Men used to treat women like property, with full rights to beat them and control their every move. I just don't think I could bear to be um, a married woman and give up all my assets to a man who was legally allowed to beat me and rape me and whom I couldn't divorce. Men dominated women's lives from early childhood and didn't allow them to gain an education or join the workforce or make free choices with their lives. The oppression of women still occurs today, especially in the Middle East and third world countries. Their reaction against the traditional role expected of women there. So, and these are the gloves that Iranian women have to wear. So this is kind of about expressing yourself yes. through something which is supposed to suppress you exactly. as an individual. Exactly. As a young boy, he was sent off to fight in the Iran-Iraq war, as so many of these young boys were. So he survived the war, but obviously it completely scarred him. In 1961, middle-class women suddenly realised that they'd been oppressed and enslaved by men for countless thousands of years, and decided that they must do something about it. These women examined every aspect of their lives and decided that everything bad that happened to them, and indeed everything bad in the world, was the fault of men. Women were good and men were bad. It was that simple. The idea of female superiority really took off with women for a number of reasons. First, like the greatest magic tricks, it wasn't new. Feminism is based largely on the philosophy and politics of Karl Marx. Put simply, Marxism says that all of the troubles affecting one group of people can be explained by the actions of another group. Marxism has been an extremely popular political system around the world because it caters to a very basic flaw in human nature, the desire to blame others for one's troubles. Feminism exists, indeed can only exist, 
by blaming men for a multitude of crimes. Feminism told women that men were the cause of all of the troubles they faced in life. And women liked that. Second, people really liked the idea of being better than other people. Feminism basically flattered women, and women have swallowed it all, right down to the last drop. Feminism told women that they were naturally good, whereas men were naturally bad. The only reason that men ruled the world was that they used their brutality and evil cunning to keep women down. Women really liked that. Third, people really liked the idea of being free and having no obligations. Feminism told women that they needed to break free from the shackles of oppression that men had imposed on them and do whatever they wanted to do. They didn't need to be mothers or girlfriends or wives. They should not be kept by any man. Women should shake off the shallow roles in life that men had forced upon them. Women should have every choice in how they lived their lives, just as men did. Women positively wet themselves over that. Women thought about all of this. Women met for coffee while their husbands were at work and had passionate discussions about how bad life was for them, and worse, how boring it was. Women then took to the streets and demonstrated about the oppression they faced. Women demanded that all of this change, so that women could at last be free. Well, that's the view many women have of the start of feminism, but this is entirely wrong.